What if I told you that this brick has something to do with climate change, sea level rise, pollution, and people? We will meet a different kind of scientist today who brings all that together to make a difference in people's lives. Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. Hi, I'm Augusta and this is the rock of the day. It looks a bit like a brick that like the bricks I see on houses when like I'm walking to school or something. And um, it looks like um, a bit like conglomerate because it has all these different rocks in it. It looks like it was like maybe somebody cut off this end kind of because it, um, or it could have just been like eroded that way. Hey, Ethan, can you tell me about this? Thank you, Augusta, for introducing this uh, thing to all of us. Now, you might be wondering, what is a brick doing on Every Rock Has a Story? Because Augusta was right. This is a brick. Now, you've all seen bricks before, right? On a building or maybe on a sidewalk. But have you ever wondered about the story of brick? Now, we've had a bunch of other episodes about useful materials that people make. Things like concrete, asphalt, rusty metal, and even plastic. All of those human-made materials have their own stories, too. Now, this time, Augusta noticed the red brick color, the flat sides, and she said it kind of reminds her of a conglomerate because of all the little rocks inside. That observation reminds us that bricks are made from something else, something natural. And it turns out that the trouble with brick begins when we turn that natural starting material into the brick itself. Now, I have a social scientist friend. That's someone who studies how people live in the world. And he knows something about the trouble with brick. I want to visit him now to see the surprising connections that he can help us make. Hey, Hi, Ethan. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thanks Good for joining us. Oh, thank you. So, everybody, I am with Praveen Kumar. Praveen is a professor in the School of Social Work here at Boston College. And, Praveen, i, I got to start with this question. Usually on Every Rock Has a Story, we're talking to other geoscientists. And you're in the School of Social Work, so mm -hmm. tell us what exactly is social work? Social workers are individuals who are geared towards really promoting a more inclusive, fair, and just society. All about people. Uh, all about people. All about people. And uh, one of the core areas of my work um, as a social worker, or you can call me a social scientist as well, is that I try to really understand the impact of climate change, environment, and pollution on the health and well-being of people, particularly impoverished people. So that brings me to my next question, Praveen. Mm -hmm. We brought this, uh, well, this brick mm -hmm. uh, from the that. studio. That's <laughs> right. Um, and I want to ask you, I know that you are studying brick, but mm -hmm. what is it that a social worker or a social scientist like you mm -hmm. would be interested in studying mm -hmm. brick? Do you know brick manufacturing is one of the most pollution-intensive work and sectors in the world? To make brick makes a lot of pollution. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm studying um, a project which is, of course, focused on brick manufacturing in Bangladesh. So that's your interest. I'm wondering, can you, can you tell us more or even show us some pictures mm -hmm. of your work in Bangladesh? You know what? I actually know a place where we can walk and I can show you a few pictures and then we can talk more about my work. So Praveen, I got another question for you. How did you get interested in social work in the first place? And, and more to the point, how as a social worker did you ever imagine to be working on brick as part <laughs> of your research? So for that, uh, we'll have to go back to my childhood. I was born in a, in a rural area in one of the most socioeconomically unprivileged states of India. Oh, India. Uh, the state of Bihar. Okay. And as a kid, as my parents would 
tell me that I was an observant kid but I used to have a whole lot of questions. But one of the common elements of all my questions is that I would observe the impact of natural and built environment on the health and well-being of poor people. Hmm. So for example, I would observe my mother and other women in the neighborhood really working and cooking in those smoke belching traditional cooking stoves. Really dirty. Really, really dirty huh. for hours. But one thing in all of these years that has remained constant is that I have always tried to understand the impact of environment, climate and pollution on the health and well-being of impoverished people. That's where the study of this brick really comes in because let me tell you that brick manufacturing is an extremely messy affair. It occurs to me that you're, you're somebody who's a difference maker. You want to make a difference in the way people can live their lives more healthily, and in a more fulfilling way. And this brick, I know is going to be a part of this story. Let's head on in and I want to hear the details of this. Absolutely. All right, let's go. Ethan, come on in. Thank you. So this is one of the conference rooms at the Schiller Institute for Integrated Science and Society. Schiller Institute for Integrated Science and Society. This is where things really do come right. together, yeah. like in, in mm -hmm. your research. So we got this brick. You're going to tell us more about how exactly is brick making, creating all this pollution? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Let me actually show you a few pictures, okay. and then that may perhaps help more. So. It's important to really first understand how bricks are made. Yeah. So most of the brick manufacturing that is done in Bangladesh, the raw material that they use in Bangladesh is clay. Clay. Yeah. And what they do is that they, the clay is molded and it is pretty much uh, uh, shaped in the shape of something like this, a brick, and then the the, the raw clay is then heated using coal. Coal? So, yes. And oh. most of the brick manufacturing kiln use coal to fire up and heat these bricks. Oh, I get it. So it's, there's not coal in the brick, mm -hmm. but the coal is what was burned to yeah. make the heat, yes. to make the brick. Absolutely. Oh. And that is one of the major sources of pollution that I was talking about. This is the carbon dioxide coming yes. out of the coal. Yes, absolutely. Got it. So what happens is that, of course, we have carbon dioxide contributions, then we have particulate matter contributions, and so on and so forth. And they they are released in the air and they contribute to global warming and by extension climate change. Right. That is one element. The second element is that it also has detrimental impact on public health issues. So this is like black sooty dust that burns out of these kilns mm -hmm. and you would breathe it in mm -hmm. and it gets into your lungs and mm -hmm. it can even get into your blood. blood streams. Wow. Yeah. And that actually contributes to some of the most grave public health concerns. People get really sick. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that is one of the problems there in Bangladesh. Uh, you will find that, of course, there are brick manufacturing workers who work for 17 to 18 hours a day. Right in the kiln. Right or, in the kiln. Yeah. But there are so very many brick manufacturing kilns which are within the vicinity of healthcare facilities, schools, dense residential areas. Yeah. So even though folks who are not working in these brick manufacturing kilns, they are still detrimentally impacted by the pollution generated by these brick kilns. Mm -hmm. Another aspect of my research in here is that Bangladesh unfortunately is at the sea level and it is highly threatened by sea level rise due to global warming. Right, so when the ice sheets in Greenland are melting, mm -hmm. the sea is going to start to rise in mm -hmm. places like Bangladesh, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then, exactly, and then what happens is that there are so many people in the rural areas of Bangladesh who do farming and agricultural work. But when there is a sea level rise that occurs, the salty water of the sea that really creeps in in the farmlands, and then increasingly those farmlands are rendered unproductive. What is the solution for those farmers? The solution for these farmers is essentially to abandon their routine farming activities mm. and then move to cities like Dhaka and take up these jobs like you know brick manufacturing right. and so on and that is another thing that I'm studying which is largely called as a climate-led displacement 
from rural and urban areas and the impact of those climate-led displacement on the health and well-being of uh, poor people. Things seem very connected. Correct. Praveen, this has been so amazing having you on Every Rock as a story. Thank you so much uh -huh. for being Thank our you. guest. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. You guys will see you back in the studio. Wow, and you thought it was just a brick? Praveen made this good old brick come alive as he showed us how its story is woven into the fabric of our planet and people's lives. Now, I'd like to bring Augusta into the studio. Hi, Augusta. So now that you've heard from Praveen, what did you think of this story? I thought that this show is called Every Rock Has a Story. And that rock def definitely has a story. Yeah, it sure does. And I guess it all started with the whole brick making process, right? I've always wondered what bricks were made of, like if they were a rock from like a volcano or they were from glaciers, but they were like made of like clay. Yeah, brick is such a common thing we see every day. I noticed even your school is made of brick. But it is interesting to wonder about how something like that is made in the first place. So what about that brick making process? I didn't really like that process, just saying. Like, I feel like making houses is like not my favorite part. Like, like when you make houses out of brick, you're like, putting carbon dioxide into the air and it like pollutes the sky and that's pretty bad for you. Like, I think staying healthy is better than shelter. Wow, Augusta, I think you've just put your finger on the real challenge here because of course staying healthy is super important. But one of the things we need to stay healthy is proper shelter like homes and buildings. So what a social scientist like Praveen is trying to figure out is the balance between creating the materials we need for the shelter that we do need and to do that sustainably without creating unhealthy pollution that can make people sick and even drive them from their homes and farms because of sea level rise. Augusta, thank you so much for being a part of this episode. Bye. Sometimes the most fascinating stories come from what seem like the most boring samples, like this brick. Now, it takes someone with the eye of a scientist, someone like Praveen or Augusta, to really look at it, notice it, and wonder what is the story of this brick. Now, Praveen also reminds us that you don't have to be a geoscientist to wonder about and to appreciate the importance of the materials of the Earth that are all around us. Remember, the trouble with bricks started with plain old clay that those brick workers shaped into rectangles and cooked in those dirty, coal-fired kilns. In our next episode, we will meet another scientist who is using that same clay, but this time to provide a solution to another of society's greatest challenges. Scientists can be difference makers. And I want to thank Praveen and Augusta for the difference they made in this episode. I wonder what kind of difference you will make for the people in your life. We'll see you next time. Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. All right, so this is uh, Schiller Interview for Real, take one. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> They're made from something natural. And it turns out that the trouble with brick 